It's the Real Talk Show. Oh, what you say now? It's the Real Talk Show. Man, I ain't got nothing but real talk for you. It's the Real Talk Show. Hold up, man, we got to start the show. It's the Real Talk Show. Well, hello and welcome to Real Talk with R.S. Brown. I am R.S. Brown. Listen, I'm excited to be talking to you today. Yes, I am. Yeah, I'm excited. You know why? Because we're going to do some, some, some legends today. Some of these, some of y'all may have already seen them, have heard about them. Guess what? We're going to bring them to you right here on Real Talk with R.S. Brown. Dylan Moore Wesby, you know, uh, Charles uh, Walker. Um, we also have, uh, let me see, let's see, I think we got Terry Elam. I think we got Terry Elam in. Um, and then we also have the first African American marshal in, Ramon Lamp. All that's coming on the show today, and I promise you, you're going to enjoy it, because I really enjoyed it. So I, I know you're going to enjoy it. Are you enjoying it? I want you to enjoy it with me. All right, listen, all of this is coming more once we come back right here on Real Talk with R.S. Brown. It's the Real Talk Show with R.S. Brown. Real Talk Show. Kendrick's Clearing and Pollock. We are located at 1247 New Savannah Road, Augusta, Georgia. We do land and lot clearing, demolition, and roll-off rental. We are still doing the job right for 35 years. You can reach us at 706-722-4409. Again, it's 706-722-4409. Well, did you hear the good news? Yes, we have some good news for you. Real Talk with R.S. Brown is going to change this time from 11 a.m. on Sundays to 9 a.m. on Sundays on Bounce TV. You know, we're going to have a real talk for you. We're going to have all things community, and we're going to help you uh, get educated while you're laughing. Right here on Real Talk with R.S. Brown on Sundays at 9 a.m. on Bounce TV, and we will re-air on Sundays at 1 a.m. on WFXG Fox 54. We will see you there. It's the Real Talk Show with R.S. Brown. A Brighter Beginning Child Care Center, located at 3423C Deans Bridge Road, where your children have a brighter beginning. You can contact us at 706-793-9777. It's the Real Talk Show with R.S. Brown. Real Talk Show. Well, welcome back to Real Talk with R.S. Brown. Listen, I told you we're going to have the uh, Marshal Ramon Lampkin come to you. He's the very first African-American Marshal right here in Richmond County and so uh, in Augusta, Georgia. So, hey, I want you to uh, check it out. He, he's doing some really good things with the Marshal's office. Well, hey, welcome to Real Talk with R.S. Brown. And I'm here with Ramon Lampkin, the Marshal, the uh, Augusta Marshal, and uh, first African-American off Marshal, right? Yes. yes sir. So uh, tell me, how does it feel to be the first African-American Marshal? One time you say the word first, I mean, there's always heavy, heavy words, and you got to make sure you're doing the right thing. You want to make sure you're being fair to people. And the biggest thing is it's an awesome responsibility. I'm making sure I'm living up to that responsibility and being accountable to the people and the citizens here in Richmond County. All right, so, so speaking of responsibility, tell me what, what exactly is the responsibility of the Marshal's Office? So we have several different responsibilities here in Richmond County. First of all, we are law enforcement agencies. We do have arrest powers. That was one thing I had to fight with, you know, mm-hmm. when I took office. People really didn't know what yeah. the office did, but mm-hmm. we did. We are law enforcement officers. You have the sheriff and you have the marshal. The sheriff deal with more of the criminal aspect, mm-hmm. and we deal more with the quality of life issues. So all the protection for all the government buildings, the mm-hmm. courthouse, the municipal building, the libraries, we make sure that you can do your business safe inside of Richmond yeah. County without anything happening there. Mm-hmm. Uh, we also do with all the civil for serving warrants or serving dispossessed papers mm-hmm. or serving type of garnishment, things of that yeah. nature. So we deal with that. Mm-hmm. Uh, evictions. We deal with civil evictions. Mm-hmm. Somebody don't pay their rent. You know, we do the evictions and, and carry out that safe uh, eviction to close. Uh, another big thing we do is dealing with code enforcement. So yeah. we have people that's not violate, not uh, living up to code, not doing yeah. what they're supposed to do in their home. We come in and we try and educate those people. And if they don't do what they're supposed to do, then we issue a citation and get them to come to court. Mm-hmm. So we deal with a lot of quality, the quality of life issues that we deal with, force with the marshal's office. The one big proponent, when you come into Augusta Regional Airport, mm-hmm. you see our deputies there. We do yeah. all the police functions for the Augusta Regional Airport. Oh, wow. Yeah. So um, now you had a couple of initiatives that you've been working on. Um, 
like, um, I think it was like the, the neighborhood cleanups. Uh, so tell us a little bit about Lowe's. Well, it's definitely something we want to partnership with our community partners here for us, helping get Augusta clean and safe. You know, nobody wants to move into a town that's not clean and not safe. That's right, that's right. It, exactly. So we teamed up with a bunch of area churches, um, city works with the city, with our uh, mm -hmm. other partners with the city, and we got people volunteering. And we yeah. locate an area, we find various projects throughout the city, mm -hmm. and we take and we go clean those areas up. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the division is to try and get the neighborhood to buy back into it. Exactly. So we take enough time out of our day to come help clean your neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Maybe you have some responsibility, you want to keep your yeah. neighborhood clean. All right, so being the first um, African American marshal, I know there's been some challenges that you had to face. Uh, what are some of the, the tough times that you had to deal with? Well, I think the biggest thing is just learning the politic role. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been in law enforcement for 24 years, mm -hmm. so I know law enforcement. I yeah. know how to, you know, I know how to put people in jail. Mm -hmm. I know how to enforce the law. I know how to enforce traffic laws. Mm -hmm. But being in city government, you got to know how to get along and how to navigate that the political true. side mm -hmm. of it. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the biggest things, getting along with the commissioners, talking to the commissioners, find out what they need, find out what the community needs, and mm -hmm. then being able to provide those needs to the community mm -hmm. and provide the needs to the commissioners. Exactly. Because they're elected also. Mm -hmm. And they commission, you know, people come to them, the constituents come to them, exactly. and they want problems solved. And we try and work with the commission to solve those problems. Mm -hmm. We work with our neighborhood alliances to solve those problems. That's the biggest thing is exactly. working hand in hand with the community to produce the best result. All right. Now, um, okay, last question. Uh, so what's, what's next for the marshal's office? Well, next for the marshal's office, for me personally, is, is seek re-election. Okay. 2020, uh, mm -hmm. I am up for re-election, seek re-election. Okay. And it's always trying to make that office better. We look, mm -hmm. our team, we look every day on ways we can improve the office. Mm -hmm. we, can, we can improve our communication. Maybe we can improve our image. And every day is always constantly looking mm -hmm. at that. So that's our, that's our lesson what we're trying to do, improve that agency, and we're going to keep doing that. Every day just look for something new we can improve on. All right. Well, hey, um, any last remarks, anything that you want the community? How can the community help you and get behind you and follow what the marshal's office is doing? Well, one thing I would like to definitely thank our community, you know, because without the community, without our citizens, without our partners, there's no way we'll be able to accomplish half the things we'll accomplish. That's right. Uh, without the employees at the marshal's office, there's no way we'll be able to accomplish half the things we'll accomplish. So first, I want to thank the employees and thank the citizens for everything they're doing. But it is more we can do. Uh, we can do more for us. But if you see people doing any type of illegal dumping, yeah. or if you see anybody that's doing something that's maybe not keeping their, their property up to the code like it's supposed to be, mm -hmm. let us know. You know, we want to get involved with those situations. Mm -hmm. If you need us, we do more than just that. We do a community service. So we go out to the oh, school wow. system. Mm -hmm. We eat lunch with the kids. We give back to our children. Wow. So if you have any type of school function that you want the marshal's office there, that's something that we definitely take serious and we take pride in, we would definitely come to the school system because mm -hmm. we want to catch our kids at the youngest age. Yeah, you yeah, know, because yeah. when they get 17, 18, you know, mm -hmm. it, it's, it's hard Harder. to reach them at that yeah, point. But if yeah. you catch them at elementary school mm -hmm. so they can see law enforcement or it's actually something that's, we're here for you, we community partners, and we're here to help you anyway, you know, that's what the biggest thing we're trying to do. All right, how can you get in touch with the marshal's office? You can dial our number at 706-821-2368. That's 706-821-2368. And my line is 706-821-2517. 706-821-2517 if you want to talk to me directly. Now that's something, I'm just going to stand uh, point that out. That's the first time we ever had a public figure, um, elective official, to actually give out directly to them, to their line. So that, that tells me that you know you don't have anything to hide and that you are willing to um, help the people. So um, that's great. And well, that's one thing I ran on being accessible and that's mm -hmm. something that I'm working on every day. You know, when people want to reach out and talk to me, they can reach out and talk to me. Yeah, you know, yeah It's about yeah. being, you know, serviceable to the community. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Hey, listen, Ramon Lankin, Marshal Ramon Lankin, the first African-American Marshal in the CSRA. Thank you, R.S. It's the Real Talk Show with R.S. Brown. Real Talk Show. Man, I need help. Come on in. Tired of getting messed up and you want to get shaped up so that you can level up. Come see Coach Neighbors at Tobacco Road Barbershop, 2587 Tobacco Road, Tampa, Georgia, 30815. Give me a call at 706 394 0617.
Again, 706-394-0617. Come holler at me. Put me in the game, coach. A Brighter Beginning Child Care Center, located at 3423C Deans Bridge Road, where your children have a brighter beginning. You can contact us at 706-793-9776. Kendrick's Clearing and Hauling. We are located at 1247 New Savannah Road, Augusta, Georgia. We do land and lot clearing, demolition, and roll-off rental. We are still doing the job right for 35 years. You can reach us at 706-722-4409. Again, it's 706-722-4409. Hey, AJ Habersham here. I'm the director for the Real Talk Shows and also the master editor for Real Talk by R.S. Brown. Do you enjoy our show? Like us on Facebook with Real Talk at R.S. Brown. Have a favorite episode or miss the previous episodes? Watch all our past episodes on our YouTube channel labeled Real Talk with R.S. Brown. See you there. It's the Real Talk Show with R.S. Brown. Real Talk Show. Hey, welcome back to Real Talk with R.S. Brown. Let's go to the Living Legends and Porsche Talk TV. Um, we're talking about Donna Westby here, and you know we got Renzo Renee with your Porsche Talk TV. Hey, let's take a travel down the roads of Aiken, South Carolina to talk to Miss Donna Moore Wesby, General Manager of Shout 94.7 FM. My name is Donna Moore Wesby, and I am currently the General Manager here at WAAW Shout 94.7 FM. Donna has been in the area for over 40 years. And in that time, she's been able to claim a lot of firsts, like the first African-American female general manager of WAAW, but that's not all. To proclaim a lot of firsts in, in my life and in my family. I was the first to actually graduate from college. Not the first to attend, but the first to actually graduate. Now, considering that I'm only 49 years old, and yes, R.S., I say only, <laughs> <laughs> only 49 years old, you know, uh, in these days and times, there are still a lot of people who have not been able for a variety of reasons to um, continue with their education, whether it's a high school diploma or a two-year degree or a four-year degree. But God enabled me to be the first to receive my college uh, degree. And um, I've also been able to be the first African-American business to receive the Greater Aiken Chamber of Commerce Small Business Award. And of course, you know, we can talk about um, the relevance of that to this area. and. Um, the realm of business uh, and employment opportunities that uh, we were able to provide to many young people. And then uh, something else that's, that's a very little known fact, RS, a lot of people don't know this because, you know, we're still young, and that is I was the first um, African American to work in a professional uh, position in the president's office at the Savannah River site. Uh, the years from 1999 till about 2002, I worked as executive assistant to two of the WSRC presidents at the Savannah River site, and uh, a lot of change was able to take place. Not only did she implement change, she also met the love of her life there. Uh, married to an amazing man that I met at the Savannah River site. His name is Donald Wesby, and uh, we've been married 21 years. And I tell people I asked for none of it, but what I did ask for was to just be in the Lord's will. Faith is everything to me. Faith without works is dead. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. So I've been accused of having crazy faith, which is true because I don't put my trust 
in man. I put my trust in God. And because I have seen God work so many miracles in my life, I have no reason to doubt that he's going to provide. I have no reason to doubt that he is going to work all things out for my good. I have no reason to think that not having faith is a better alternative. <laughs> you know, it's just not. So faith is, is everything to me. Donna also has a message for the young ladies of the community. Don't get caught up in the fact that you are a woman with regard to all the negatives that the world may uh, try to you know put in your path oh you know there's this glass ceiling oh you know women can only go foot but so far that's noise don't listen to the noise just tap into what god has placed within you do the very best you can by walking in excellence and allow the lord to do the rest ladies and gentlemen our living legend miss donna moore wesby hello and welcome to porch talk tv i'm your host Renza Renee, I am here at the Ronald McDonald House with a very special guest. I'm going to let her introduce herself. Hi, I'm Betts Murdison, CEO at Ronald McDonald House Charities. Yes, Ms. Betts, tell us a little bit about the Ronald McDonald House and the services that you provide. We are standing in a very special home. We are not a facility, we are a home. We have 23 families that stay with us every night who have children receiving medical treatment across the street at Children's Hospital of Georgia. So they take care of their child at the hospital, then they come here to have dinner and go to bed for the night. That is awesome. Yeah. And so the reason for this interview is you have an annual event that you do every single year that is so amazing. Tell us a little bit about it. Well, and Renza, you've been there, so you know what it's all about. Yes. This is our event. It's called Wine, Women, and Shoes. And it's about those three things, wine, women, and shoes. Okay. We all come together on Sunday, March 1st at the Bell Auditorium at 2 in the afternoon. We will taste some wine. I've got seven, seven vintners, or maybe eight this year, coming from California. So we get to taste some special wines that you may not get to, to uh, taste here uh, in Augusta. If we're going to have shopping, we have nine marketplace people that are going to sell us really good stuff, clothing, purses, jewelry, shoes, all kinds of stuff. But, uh, okay, so we have marketplace. Then we'll have uh, some soul men. These are very special men, very good looking men from around our town and their job is to make us feel wonderful and give us wine and just make our day, our afternoon special. Yes. We also have a fashion show put, put on by Brittany's. She has a boutique on Fury's Ferry. So Brittany will be showing off some of her clothes and then we will be crowning our soul man. And our soul man who raised the most money last year was Michael Seward okay. and Michael will be here to crown this year's this soul man. Is, okay, okay. That is so wonderful. And do you all have a certain goal that you look to reach every year when you do the funnel? With Wine, Women and Shoes, we, we like to, about $100,000 is what, what we're hoping to raise. Wow, well, okay. So how will people purchase tickets mm -hmm. or get in touch with you mm -hmm. as well as if they would like to donate to the cause, how would they be able to do that? One-stop shopping. Go to our website, rmhcaugusta.org. If they want to buy tickets, I recommend getting on there immediately because we only have about 40 left so it, tickets are going fast and if you want to donate you can go to rmhcaugusta.org and we'll set you up with whatever you want amazing amazing well i want to thank you for taking the time out to give us the information about the upcoming event and listen give us the time the date and the location okay. one more time it's sunday march 1st at the bell auditorium at two in the afternoon that's great all right we'll see you there Thank you. It's the Real Talk Show with R.S. Brown. Real Talk Show. Man, I need help. Come on in. If you're tired of getting messed up and you want to get shaped up so that you can level up, come see Coach Neighbors at Tobacco Road Barbershop, 2587 Tobacco Road, Georgia, 30815. Give me a call at 706-394-0617. Again, 706-394-0617. Come holler at me. Put me in the game, coach!
WTA Contractors All-in-One Veteran-Owned Company saves time and money. Services provided are land grading, roofing, flooring, concrete, drywall, decks, brick masonry, plumbing, and electrical. Contact us for your next project at 803-624-0724 or WTAContractors.com. Touch by a preacher. It's the Real Talk Show with R.S. Brown. Real Talk Show. Hey, 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 welcome back to Real Talk with R.S. Brown, and I'm excited. We're almost wrapping this thing up, but we cannot go with Bri without bringing you Charles Walker. Now, you guys may have heard about him, uh, senator, uh, former senator, and I mean, does some amazing things for not just the um, city of Augusta, but for the state of Georgia in the U.S. I mean, go ahead and say it, the U.S. as well. So um, let's see, we got a chance to sit down and talk with him, so let's go and check that out. From peanuts to power, that's the story of former Senate Majority Leader Charles Walker. Today we honor him as our living black legend, and he gives us a little wisdom on how he lives his life. Hello, I'm Charles Walker. Uh, I am the president of the Walker Group and the former Senate Majority Leader in the state of Georgia. And I think one of the most outstanding accomplishment we as a people can make is to make sure that we are actively involved in the political process because the political process <clears throat> establishes the do's and the don'ts. It creates winners and losers. And if you're not in the room, you're not in the deal. Walker has definitely been in the room and definitely in the deal, addressing many issues in the Georgia Senate, and he said he didn't let being black hold him back. Being black is a definition, but not a condition. You can be black and still be ambitious and, and achieve a lot of things. We sometimes, we as a people, believe that we cannot achieve because we are black. And I don't subscribe to that. I think that uh, being a free person, you can do anything you want to do. Now, there are obstacles associated with being black, and there are many. As a matter of fact, you have to work twice as hard in order to achieve the same identical thing you, you would if you had been white. Uh, banks generally don't do business with black people. They look for a reason not to do business with black people. Uh, the people who run the day-to-day -day affairs of our community oftentimes overlook and neglect the black community. So yes, there are some problems with being, the, being black, but, but what you have to do is to find a way to own yourself. And too many of us are out there and we don't own ourselves. We, we like to fake it until we make it. And generally they get to one stage in life and they usually stay there. Uh, they have one experience in life. Uh, for example, to get elected to the city council. Uh, that's, that's a great goal. People need to get elected, but uh, you, you won't move anything to help the masses. Walker has definitely helped the masses by introducing different bills and helping different local organizations. Well, you know, if you look at the Hope Scholarship, I, the, I introduced the bill to create the Hope Scholarship for the state of Georgia. I introduced the legislation to create the Children's Health Insurance Program in, in Georgia. Uh, here in Augusta, Georgia, I, was, I introduced and put money in the budget to form the, uh, the Cancer Center. Uh, what we have here in Augusta, Georgia. I tried to do things to help pay in college. Uh, I gave them one million dollars to uh, refurbish the Cantler Building at, at Payne College. So what I've tried to do is not only do something socially, uh, like passing uh, laws to mitigate the, uh, the penalty uh, for people who use marijuana and drugs, what, they, what, the, what the man has done, and black people participated in this, We've created what I call black crimes. And we, uh, we, when we have a black crime, uh, three scracks and you're out. And all these different laws were designed to take black people out of the picture. 50% of African Americans between the ages of 18 and 35 have had some negative experience with law enforcement. 
And if you get it on your record, it lasts for a thousand years. They don't ever take it off. You can do something as a 14 year old kid and it'll follow you the rest of your life if you don't go down there and try to get it taken off. And you can get it taken off, but you gotta know how to do it. Nobody explains to you how to get it done. If it's a misdemeanor, you go to the state court and you ask, you can write a letter, ask for your record to be uh, removed, expunged because of the age factor. They can do it on that. Uh, some, some misdemeanors, uh, judges will, uh, will take you off probation and, and remove you, give you, treat you on the First Offenders Act. If you've only been arrested one time in your life, that's First Offender. So you can get sentenced under, even if you've done this, the probation or paid it, you can go and get the record clean for, you know, forever so that when you go and apply for a job that's have you ever been arrested, you don't have to check the box. You know, sometimes people ask me the question about, you know, how did I raise my children? I have four children. Three of my kids are attorneys. And my, other, my oldest son is in business and he travels all over the country uh, selling his product in, in the, uh, in the uh, green industry. So I've taught my kids the same thing. They need to be in a position so that they can give back. The reason I wanted them to be a lawyer is because you can leave, if you are an attorney, you can be involved in any aspect of business. You know, you don't have to just be practicing courts all the time. You can be the head of the CEO of a large company. It's just all kinds of opportunities. But the question, the thing is, you need to get the education. And uh, if you get the education, then you can just about do anything you want to do. Education is a natural equalizer. I don't believe that education will deliver you from poverty in, in, in total, but it will put you in a position. So if you get an opportunity, if you got the right education, then you can, you can grow. Everybody can't go into business. Everybody don't need to go into business. And what's Walker's key to success? Never allow others to downsize your dreams. Well, hey, did you enjoy the show? I enjoy bringing it to you. Listen, if you want to become a sponsor of the show, do me this one favor. Call 762-233-9009. That's 762-233-9009. Listen, if you uh, don't have time to call, you can always always email us at realtalkwithyouth at gmail.com. That's realtalkwithyouth, as in young people, at gmail.com. Listen, as better as possible, good is not good enough. We want you to be in that zone of better. Don't just be great, but be the greatest. R.S. Brown, and I'm signing off.